Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I am here to kind of give, give you a beginner's guide to Langchain. Um, Langchain is, you can really think, kind of think of it as a playground that facilitates the ability to basically link, you know, large language models like ChatGPT with a ton of different other functionalities so you can use it in actual use cases. Um, and so it's a software library that allows you to link ChatGPT and that underlying large language model to interact with things like external databases, APIs, even other AI models. Um, and really it's kind of a Swiss army knife for AI tooling, enabling these models to you know, not only generate text, pull in data, process it, and really productionize your use of these underlying LMs so that you don't necessarily have to go log into chatgpt.com and interact with it directly there. You can build it into existing workflows. Um, now, why is this tool so popular? It's because it just up levels the abilities of these AI past just, hey, you know, your know it all in a closed book to the ability to expand it to new use cases. So you can hook it up to, you know, let's say your existing GitHub repo and help it learn and understand how you're developing so that then it can provide additional suggestions on, you know, how you can develop more efficiently or can start creating new code using your existing format. Um, so what I'm going to do today is just show you how to get set up with Langchain locally, kind of how you'll interact with it, um, and just give you the basics so that you can get started using it yourself. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to switch into my local production environment and show you how to get started. So Langchain recommends using uh, Jupyter Notebooks to run their tasks. So if you don't already have a interface like VS Code or Jupyter Notebooks itself that can actually run the interface, uh, recommend actually doing so. Um, and then you can just pip install that and continue on with the rest of this video. Uh, but to get started with Langchain, what you're going to want to do is just run pip install Langchain, um, and this will install all the Langchain libraries onto your local machine. After you've done that, we're also going to need to download and install a uh, local, or not a local, or sorry, a local LLM, or the OpenAI Langchain integration package. Um, so I'm going to show you how to just install the Langchain OpenAI package, and then I'm going to switch over to just using the local open source one because that's totally free, and this OpenAI version is going to obviously cost money for your API requests. Um, so pip install, uh, you know, Langchain OpenAI if you want to go with that route. But I'm going to now switch over to showing you how to do it with an open source uh, model or LLM called Olama. So to download Olama, you just go to this link. Download for Mac OS, olama.ai or slash download, um, and then download this package and unzip it. Uh, then after you've downloaded and installed the local uh, Olama uh, application, you'll want to run Olama run Llama 2, um, and this will start up a local version of a LLM for you. So you don't have to make any API requests, you can run everything locally. Now, if you just want to interact with Olama from Terminal for fun, uh, you can just type in your questions here, but we're not here to do that. Um, so you can see, just want to test it out. Here's what is an Apple and it'll give you a response. What we want to do is actually use this in our code. Um, so what we're going to do now is start building our Python script where we're actually going to use Olama and trigger a question programmatically. Um, so here we have from Langchain Community LLMs, import Olama. You'll also need to actually pip install this uh, Langchain Community LLMs uh, package. So pip install Langchain Community. Um, and then here we're going to import Olama and then create an LLM object uh, called Olama with the specifications of the Llama 2 model. Then once you've created your LLM object, uh, you can create another cell down here. We're going to do LLM.invoke and ask it a question. And so this, what this will do is just basically have the same effect as when I asked that question, what is an apple of the terminal? But instead, this is just asking it programmatically. So this is how we can start integrating LLMs into you know, an actual script. Um, and so that's why I ran it ahead of time. It does, it will take a little bit longer um, just because you know, it needs to actually go back in LLM and then pull it into Python here. So you know, we're not here to just basically replicate what we've already done. So what I want to show you now is how you can integrate actually prompts into this workflow. Um, so here what we can do is import a chat prompt template 
where we can actually give it system level instructions like you are a world class technical documentation writer. And then whatever the input is, we're going to feed into the user box here. And so what this is analogous to is uh, if you ever worked with the custom chat GPTs, there's a, you know, a process where you can give the system and the underlying language models instructions on how to act. And then that will filter responses to actually be you know, presented in a certain way. In this case, from the perspective of a world class uh, technical documentation writer. And now that we've kind of defined our prompt template, we can actually use this to then build a chain. So that's actually where Lang chain comes from. Um, it's the ability to have multiple interactions with your LLM, uh, keep building on top of it and rely on information that was you know, previously presented in the prompt template um, to actually guide the conversation while preserving that context. So here we have this chain where we're gonna give it a prompt, we're going to give it an LLM, and then the way that we'll actually give our own response in here and present it um, you know, as my user input here is by using chain.invoke input, how can Langsmith, Langsmith help with chest testing? And you'll notice the difference here, what I'm using the invoke method is I'm using this chain object rather than just the generic LLM object. So when I do that, it will know to use my prompt and then feed in my LLM or use my LLM, um, but have it guided by my prompt. So here we can do chain.invoke, how can Langsmith help with testing and uh, see what we come up with. And so here, now that it's finished running, you can see as a world-class technical documentation writer, glad you asked. Um, and Lang Langsmith talks about Langsmith, um, you know, different ways you can use Langsmith. And you can see this is a slightly better uh, response than this previous one, uh, which was a little bit less technical. Um, so not a huge improvement, but it does allow us to, you know, start tailoring our response to whoever we imagine the end user is. Um, and that's where Langchain really is handy, where you want to have kind of a tailored response and have it uh, be created programmatically for things like chatbots, for integration of LLMs and chat agents into you know your own actual uh, use cases. Now, you might have noticed this is a bit of a kind of clunky looking message. So how can we clean up this message and kind of just have it presented as an easily accessible string? That is where the output parsers come into play. Um, and so output parsers will exactly as it sounds like, take the output from the LLM and parse it into the format of your choosing. In this case, we are going to use the STR output parser, which will allow us to convert this chat message into just a straight string object. Um, and the way we implement this into our existing chain is by adding this chain, uh, prompt LLM and output parser right here. Um, and so now what we can do after this is invoke our chain prompt again, we have the same format as before, but now this chain has had the output parser added to it. So our output should be uh, released to us as a string. Um, and again, I'll pause and let this run and show you what it looks like. And now you can see here that instead of having kind of these ugly, you know, slash n, uh, not, you know, obviously because this is structured the chat message, now we have just a pure string, which is much easier to work with if we want to use this output in any other downstream actions. Uh, we don't now have to convert it from that message format or parse it to a string. Uh, we just have it directly available using this string output parser. Um, so another great benefit of Llama is it just kind of standardizes and automates some of those processes in dealing with outputs that you would otherwise have to, you know, develop your own methodologies for. Now, let's say we want to add some additional context to this LLM uh, so that it actually knows, hey, how can Langsmith help, Langsmith help with testing? Uh, and we need to find a way to programmatically pass that additional context in it via retrieval. Um, and retrieval is a way of you know, gathering data from an external source that might be too big to pass to it directly, but you can use a retriever to fetch only the most relevant pieces and then pass them into the LLM so that then the LLM can use them to inform its downstream outputs. Um, so in this example, we're going to look up some relevant documents from the retriever and then pass them into the prompt. And this retriever in this case is going to be an HTTP endpoint. So just a basic URL. But it can also be SQL tables. You know, it could be a call that's been broken up into and transcribed into embeddings. Um, but really, any data source that you can uh, you can pass into the retriever as a source of data for your LLM. Um, so here, what we'll do is we'll from the again that same Langchain community document loaders web based loader. It's so this is where you know if you wanted to choose a different method of loading your data, 
you would just choose uh, the corresponding loader from this Langchain community library. Um, and so here we have is loader equals web-based loader docs.smith.langchain slash overview. And this allows us to take the content host at this page and then load it into our LLM. So here we have loader.load equals docs. Um, now, the next step is going to be actually configuring Olama to work with uh, these embeddings. So here we have this Langchain community uh, embeddings import Olama embeddings, and this will allow us to actually take this raw document data and pass it into a vector store, index it, so that it's more easily consumable by the LLM. So here we're initializing our embeddings object from Olama embeddings, and then we'll actually need to uh, install another package for a simple file vector store. Um, so vectorization and vector store uh, is basically just a way of taking data, breaking it down into chunks that are then referenceable by numbers. And so it's just easier for you know, LLMs to actually process that. So you are going to want to p pip install uh, FAISS-CPU. Um, and then this will allow you to just have a very basic local vector store um, that will allow you to store the vectorized data from the embeddings that we're going to create from this website link. Then after we've done that, we're going to need to import that vector store, import FAISS, import a text splitter and a recursive tech, uh, character text splitter here. Um, then we're going to initialize that an object of text splitter, use our uh, text splitter to then split the documents. So these raw documents that we just loaded from the uh, website, we're then going to take FAS from documents, embeddings. So use our Olama embeddings uh, format, take the raw document and then use FAS F F A I S S to actually vectorize those documents and store them um, as a vector. So it's indexed in now our vector store after we run this cell. So we'll run this here. So now that we have this data index and vector store, we're going to create a retrieval chain. So similar to how we created that initial LLM chain here, we're going to create a chain that takes a question and the retrieve documents uses this combined documents library to actually combine the documents into that chain um, and then use it in our chat. So here we have a chat prompt template, which is going to take in some context, take in some input, um, and then we are going to create a chain of that with document chain, LLM, and prompt. So the prompt um, is going to contain our context, um, which will then be retrieved from this vector file store. Now, once you create our new chain that will actually take in our additional context, we're then going to create a retrieval chain. And so here, what we're doing is we're creating a vector as retriever. So telling our retriever to use our vector database, uh, retrieve it or to you know retrieve from that vector database. Uh, I know that it's actually vector information. Then we're going to create our retrieval chain using that retriever and using that document chain that we just defined up here. So say, run and save that. And then we have the moment of truth where now what this will do is automatically take whatever prompt we give it and actually say, hey, look for vectors that match the same vectors that this prompt will produce. So here we have, how can Langchain help with testing? And what we'll do here, so get our response and then it's going to print out in a second. And now we have a much, much improved response that takes our prompt and then searches for similar uh, document or similar parts of our document and then exposes that information to us in a human readable string. Um, and so this is all I wanted to get to today, uh, just showing you know, hey, how can you get started piping your own uh, documentation, websites, whatever into an LLM so that you can then ask tailored questions on really specific things and get really specific data or responses back that use the actual data that you're trying to query. Um, so I hope you found this useful. If you have, let me know, uh, and I'll keep making more videos on Langchain and more use cases. Um, if you don't, let me know as well, and let me know what you'd like to see instead. Um, but above all else, have a good one. Data guy out. Peace.